My encounter with that cat was purely accidental. It happened on a rainy night three years ago. I was rushing home after work. When I was about to walk under a guardrail. Meow, meow. I heard the cry of a kitten. When I squinted, I could see a tiny black kitten, presumably just born, shivering in a small cardboard box. It seemed its eyes were not yet open. Inside the box was a note. This little one was forced to bear an ill-fated life. To whoever finds her, please take good care. The note was written in careful handwriting. I could see the gentle spirit trying to entrust the future of the abandoned cat to a cat lover. There was also a $50 bill attached, presumably for milk expenses. My name is Joanna. I'm a 40-year-old office worker. In fact, I just got married the other day. I've been a workaholic since I was young and managed to get promoted to team leader, a notable achievement for a woman. I was quite satisfied with my job, but being single can be lonely at times. From the younger folks in the company, I'd hear whispers like, no matter how good she is at her job, being without a husband past 40 isn't great, or she seems to have missed out on a woman's happiness. I was aware of such backbiting. There were co-workers who admired me, but still, society's breeze was cold to a single woman in her 40s. Then, at a high school reunion, I reconnected with Ethan. Ethan was also single and seemed to be diligently searching for a partner, but couldn't seem to find one. We hit it off immediately, and after dating for a while, we got married. Perhaps, like me, Ethan had a simple calculation that he would marry anyone if possible. But I felt a hint of affection for Ethan, an old friend whom I had known since high school. I believed that as we continued our married life, this love would grow. I prayed that it would be so. Upon marriage, Ethan set one condition. That was to live with his mother at his family home. Ethan, who had lost his father early and lived with his mother, couldn't bear to leave his aging mother alone. Probably one of the reasons Ethan's search for a partner wasn't successful was due to the fact that living with his mother-in-law could be a hurdle. But the mother-in-law before marriage seemed like a kind person, and she said things like, I have no doubt about anyone who will become Ethan's wife. I was worried that he might be alone for his whole life, and I'm so glad that it brings tears to my eyes. In the long run, I'd likely have to take care of her in her old age, so I thought it might be better to live together from the start. That's what I thought. And I also set a condition for living together. This was about bringing my longtime cat, Max. Max was a stray cat I brought to my apartment complex on a rainy day. Now, he's an essential part of the family. Even when I got married and moved to my husband's parents' house, I couldn't bear to part with Max. I pleaded as such, and Ethan and my future mother-in-law graciously agreed. And so, after a modest wedding ceremony, Max and I stepped into Ethan's family home. However, once we started living together, my mother-in-law, who was supposed to be kind, changed her attitude dramatically. Joanna dear, now that you're married and are part of this family, you'll take care of the housework every day, won't you? My mother-in-law sipped her tea with a serene face. Ah, uh, finally Ethan is married, I can take it easy from now on. I've been telling him to quickly find a woman and bring her home because my back is bad. Huh? What? I couldn't catch up with the sudden change. Did she say all the housework was my responsibility? Of course, since I was living there, I planned to do my share of housework. But the way my mother-in-law's saying it, it sounded like I'd be doing everything. It should have been divided among the three of us, including Ethan. Divided. Wait a minute, please. I didn't get married to become a maid. I tried to assert, but my mother-in-law casually retorted, oh, didn't you say you wanted to dedicate yourself to your mother-in-law? Huh? Who said that and when? When I glared at Ethan who was next to me, he averted his eyes in a hurry. Apparently, Ethan had been lying to my mother-in-law to impress her. Regardless of what Ethan said, I'm not here to be a maid. I will, of course, do my share of the housework, but it should be divided among the three of us. It was better to communicate the truth sooner rather than later for the future. Oh my! Are you suggesting Ethan should do the housework too? Ethan is a man. Nowadays, it's normal for men to do housework. If men don't do housework, what happens to single men living alone? That's right. Housework is women's work, right? Even Ethan said something like that. 
Do these two have outdated thinking from before the 80s? If this was a computer OS, it would have been unsupported long ago. I was appalled inside, but I couldn't say anything more to Ethan and my mother-in-law. I guess I thought it was an important time to play the good wife. And as if they saw right through me, they continued to pile the housework onto me. And so, my life in hell began. Hey! Don't just sleep in, get up! Start preparing breakfast quickly! My mother-in-law kicked my pillow at 4 a.m. before the sun even rose. My mother-in-law's old, so she always got up early and always came to wake me up. Without any consideration for it being the couple's bedroom. It didn't matter whether I had been working late the night before or if it was a day off. I'd jolt awake from a kick to my pillow, with Ethan sound asleep next to me. I shook Ethan awake. Hey, could you say something to your mom? It's still 4 a.m. Ethan grumbled something that sounded half asleep, mmm. Well, older people wake up early. Cut her some slack. Yawn. I'm going back to sleep. I kicked Ethan's pillow away with all my might as he was about to go back to sleep. You should do some chores too. I don't want to be the only one being woken up. Huh? Why me? Mom always said that's the wife's job. Like mother, like son. Moreover, even Max, who sleeps in a different room, started to wake up early because of my mother-in-law. Actually, as soon as my mother-in-law woke up, she'd pester Max, which would wake him up, and he would come to me for help. If he started making a ruckus with his end-of-the-world-like meowing, it was impossible for me to stay asleep. And then, my mother-in-law from the other side would complain about the noise. Between the two of them, it felt like I was being assaulted by loudspeakers from the right and left. I felt absolutely miserable. I loved Max, but I hated my mother-in-law and husband. Even if I started doing chores from 4 a.m., my mother-in-law and husband did nothing but complain about my methods. Please do better. Can't you even do one chore properly despite living up to 40? What a waste of years. We need you to be more aware of your responsibilities as a wife. I was just married. I didn't move in to be treated like a servant. This was not the married life I envisioned. Maybe I should have filed for divorce immediately. But I was 40 years old. My friends and colleagues had gotten married long ago and they had been gossiping about me that I missed the boat. No matter how good I was at my job, because I hadn't found the one, I was treated as a loser. After finally getting married, if I divorced so quickly, I couldn't imagine what people would say. It was petty pride, but I just couldn't let it go. Perhaps Ethan saw through that. If you don't want to do chores, get out. We can divorce if you want. But you're the one who will be in trouble, right? If you don't like it, respect my mom much more. Regrettably, at that time, I had no choice but to obey. But a life of waking up at 4 a.m. and being commanded until late at night was unbearable. Fatigue piled up and I eventually collapsed at work. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. My colleague, Sarah, had stayed with me. Ah. Uh. Are you awake? Good. I was worried when you collapsed all of a sudden. Sarah had been a reliable colleague who admired me. Thank you. I'm sorry for causing you trouble. I'll have my husband come to pick me up, so it's all right. When I smiled at her, Sarah hesitated. Well, after you were brought to the hospital, I called your house. But they just said, okay, and also. Despite their daughter-in-law collapsing, neither my mother-in-law nor husband seemed to be coming to get me. There was more to Sarah's story. When asked, is there anything else? I was told, there's a pile of ironing to do, so come straight home as soon as you wake up, don't use a cab because it's a waste of money. I was in shock. Not only was I not being picked up, but the only things being worried about were the ironing and cab fare. Was I nothing more than a tool to be used in that house? Seeing me silently devastated, Sarah looked at me with concern. M. Manager, are you okay? You seem to have been struggling since you got married. Sarah seemed genuinely concerned about me, and I found myself revealing the truth to her. It was embarrassing to talk about my private life with a subordinate, but I had nowhere else to voice my concerns. 
That's what's happening. I'm tired because I'm made to take care of the house from 4 a.m. until late at night. But, that's a wife's duty. I tried to force a smile. I couldn't show my weakness to Sarah after all. But then, Sarah asked with a serious look. What does it mean to be a wife? Are you a slave? Eh? Why are you putting up with this? You should just divorce that man. Eh, no, I mean, it's not bad enough for a divorce. I hastily shook my head. Divorce was not an option. What would people say if I did that? That's ridiculous. This isn't right. You're working hard at your job and yet, you're treated like a slave. If this goes on, you're gonna break down. Is your husband worth throwing your life away for? I respect you. I want you to be happier. Sarah's words shook me. That was right. Why was I being used by those people? Why was I continuing this miserable married life? It was due to my petty pride. I've finally got married. It would be embarrassing to get divorced. Such feelings were binding me. My current life could be seen as embarrassing from an outsider's perspective. No, I was the one who should be ashamed. I finally made up my mind to divorce. But after being belittled to this extent, I couldn't be satisfied with just getting a divorce. I wanted to make Ethan and my mother-in-law feel even more ashamed. I wanted revenge. After thinking for a while, I decided to wait until Thanksgiving Day to announce the divorce. I quietly continued my slave-like life until the day of the family celebration. Ethan's ancestral home was in the countryside, and it would take a whole day to attend the party held by his family. Due to the older relatives, including the head of the family, having refrained from attending the wedding of Ethan and I, this Thanksgiving day was essentially my first official introduction. You better work properly at the ancestral event. If you laze around, I'll be the one who's embarrassed. On the train to their home, my mother-in-law jabbed at me. Yes, of course. I will do my best. I forced a smile. Yes, I was going to work among members of the main family tree. As soon as we got to their home, I started working eagerly. I proactively served tea to the relatives, set up sofas, and immediately came to the aid of the elderly who had trouble walking. The usual greetings came to an end, and the feast started. I swiftly and beautifully arranged the dinner on the table. My daughter-in-law is absolutely useless and sluggish. She gets older but doesn't contribute a thing, it's so frustrating. My mother-in-law, it seemed, had been grumbling like this to the relatives before Thanksgiving. Initially, the relatives who had been quite cool towards me, seemed impressed by my dedicated hard work. She's nothing like the person we heard about. Really, she's cheerful, hardworking, and a great daughter-in-law. Despite such praise, I humbly replied, Oh, not at all, I'm always being scolded by my mother-in-law. I'm a less-than-perfect daughter-in-law, unfortunately. Such was my demeanor that the relatives seemed to entirely change their opinion of me. If you're a less-than-perfect daughter-in-law, what does that make the rest of us? You could very well be the model daughter-in-law. More and more compliments were heard. He he he. I lowered my eyes and chuckled with satisfaction. I felt I had made a strong impression on the main family. Then, the feast was drawing to a close. It was about time. I stood up, took a chair in the center of the living room, and sat on it. Huh? Everyone was surprised when I suddenly sat in the center of the seats, and Ethan let out a confused voice. What, what are you doing? Ignoring Ethan, I said, it seems the feast is coming to an end. I must excuse myself. It is truly regrettable that I am parting ways with you all after only just having the pleasure of meeting you. I have decided to divorce Ethan. This will be the last time you see me. I thought I would enjoy time with you just once, so I did my best to show my gratitude. I wish you all the best. I finally delivered the speech I had prepared. The relatives stirred. The most surprised were Ethan and my mother-in-law. What? What's this sudden talk about divorce? I will not accept this. That's right. Divorce is no joke. Calmly, I replied, oh? But weren't you the one saying I should leave? If you hate housework, leave. You'll be the one who's worse off if we divorce. 
After some thought, I realized that I won't be troubled at all if we divorce. Then I turned to my mother-in-law. But you've been pushing all the housework on me while I work, while you just lie in front of the TV munching on snacks. And you've been telling the relatives that I'm lazy and slow? How could you say such things about me, who has woken up by you at 4 a.m. to do chores? I declared this with indignation. The women of the main family began to whisper among themselves, seeming to be taken aback by my force. That's right. I heard it too. She said she had a no-good daughter-in-law who does nothing. So, I thought some terrible daughter-in-law would be coming, but that's not the case at all. The relatives had been watching my hard work at the Thanksgiving celebration. I continued. I tried my best to maintain the household because I wanted to become a part of this family through marriage. But neither my mother-in-law nor Ethan acknowledged that, and I've been falsely accused. I can't take it anymore. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Eh, wait Joanna, calm down. The mother-in-law tried to smooth things over, looking anxious about the reactions from the crowd. It was already too late by then. I'm perfectly calm. If anyone is panicking because the truth got out to the relatives, isn't that you, mother-in-law? Then, it was Ethan's turn to stammer. Joanna, are you joking about divorce? I just wanted you to be a good wife, that's all. A good wife? I was so ticked by that word. I stood up and looked down at Ethan coldly. So, what kind of good husband have you been? Shoving all the housework on me and splitting the living expenses with my salary. Is that your idea of being a good husband, picking and choosing what you like? That's a huge mistake. That's right. Joanna's absolutely right. At the gossip of the relatives, my mother-in-law and Ethan were silenced with red faces. Then, my grandfather-in-law, who had been silent all along in the main family, asked to speak. I'm sorry, Joanna. My daughter has caused you a great deal of trouble. My grandfather-in-law's the father of the mother-in-law. Since she's 67 years old, he must be over 90. He still held great power as the head of the family. He was definitely aged quite a bit, but he was energetic in his chic clothes, and his voice was still strong. My grandfather-in-law started to tell a shocking truth in front of his family. One day, a great-grandchild in the family brought back a stray kitten. The kid wanted to keep it as a pet, but the relatives vehemently opposed it, so he had to reluctantly give up. My grandfather-in-law felt sorry for his great-grandchild and took care of it. He asked a servant of the family to take it to a place far beyond the child's reach. The servant, as instructed, placed the kitten in a box under a guardrail and waited for a kind-hearted owner to pick it up. Joanna happened to come across it. The servant confirmed where the owner lived and reported it to my grandfather-in-law. The letter and money left with the box were from my grandfather-in-law. I was shocked. My grandfather-in-law had been worrying about the fate of the kitten and had ordered the servant to occasionally check on Joanna's apartment. And then he found out that the owner was going to be a bride in our family. That kind-hearted woman. My grandfather-in-law was deeply moved by the wonders of the world. I was deeply moved. I never imagined that Max, the kitten from that time, would come to me because of such a fate. That letter had been from my grandfather-in-law who was sitting right in front of me. I quietly took out the letter I always kept in my wallet. My grandfather-in-law's handwriting looked distorted through my tears. She has always been a crafty liar since childhood. At first, I'm sure she only showed Joanna her good side, and then as soon as you guys got married, she thought she had you and changed her attitude. I didn't teach her enough. My grandfather-in-law turned his face towards my mother-in-law, and then he looked me straight in the eye with a look of regret on his face. No, it's not your fault, sir. But, I regret that I couldn't do much for you in such a short marriage. Thinking that it might be good to show off a little in front of the relatives, I tried to spice up the story with a bit of flattery. You are a fine daughter-in-law. To neglect such a woman is unforgivable. These two need to reconsider their actions. My grandfather-in-law's angry voice echoed throughout the room. Therefore, I command you, the grandfather-in-law bellowed, release Joanna at once and both of you shall pay her damages. Eh? No, no way. 
At my grandfather-in-law's shocking order, Ethan's mom and Ethan himself were in a panic, their mouths agape. She has been grievously inconvenienced by you. It's only fair. My orders are absolute, you better remember that. Disobey and you'll be instantly banned from this house. And forget about any inheritance. No way! My mother-in-law and Ethan let out screams of disbelief. After Thanksgiving, I returned home and immediately began packing my things. I had prepared somewhat for this day, so it was just a matter of packing various things into my bag. I told myself not to forget Max's daily necessities. Where are you going? Ethan, flustered, asked me as I quickly packed my things. I've found an apartment where I can live with Max. I'm going to start a new life from there. The matter of damages can wait. Ethan mumbled to himself, lost for words. Just so you know, playing ignorant won't get you anywhere. I've made arrangements to stay in touch with the family who have shown sympathy for your grandfather and me. If anything happens, your grandfather will be contacted immediately. My mother-in-law, who had been listening, looked furious at being unable to respond. She scratched her head like a furious monkey and screamed. Oh, for heaven's sake. If you're going to leave, then just go. She then threw my bag at the front door. I've hated it from the start, this creepy black cat. Take that. As she reached out to the items I had gathered for Max. Stop it. Before my cry could halt her, Max moved swiftly. Max let out a growl and, before I knew it, had jumped on her back, his claws tearing into her clothes. Ah! My cashmere! My silk scarf! My mother-in-law, who had dressed up in expensive clothes for Thanksgiving, was now screaming as her clothing was being torn apart. Max turned to Ethan and arched his back, hissing. Ah ah! Ethan retreated to the wall his eyes tearing up. What a wimp, scared of a single cat. That's enough, Max. At my call, Max jumped onto my lap. Thank you for avenging me. I stroked Max. Max purred happily, rubbing his head against me. I got a divorce from Ethan. By order of Ethan's grandfather, a substantial sum of money was deposited into my account as damages. Ethan and his mother apparently had to sell their house to make the payment. Mother and son now live huddled together in a small apartment. I informed my high school classmates in detail about what had happened, and Ethan's reputation plummeted. He probably won't be able to show his face at any reunions ever again. I returned to singlehood. For the first time, I realized that working hard at my job and living freely with Max was much happier than staying in a marriage I didn't want. Sarah, my colleague at work who woke me up to this realization, said, I'm glad for you. No offense, but you've become even more beautiful since your divorce. She cheered me up with her flattery. Don't tease a divorced woman. Come on, back to work, back to work. I encouraged Sarah. Yes. I have a fulfilling job, reliable colleagues, and when I come home, there's Max. What a blissful life. I'm really glad I realized how important these ordinary things are. I looked out the office window. The usual view was spread out before me, as if nothing had happened. All right, time to get to work today.